foundations are powerful foundations are powerful regions have foundational problems you know the power of foundations by the patterns that follow the patterns as it happened to son it happened to father it happened to elder brother families where women feed the men no matter how hard working the men are something must happen hallelujah but this is why god has ordained a meeting like this because in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god everything that needs to be corrected for your glory to rise everything that needs to be put in place this night in the presence of the angels and the presence of the mighty one who is the king of glory it must be corrected this night <laughs> hallelujah i came from a background and a family and a region where i didn't see some things happen to people i had to sit down and study it sincerely and and to be honest myself that if I have to rise to a position where I'll be able to serve and honor the name of the Lord at a global scale, there are things that need to be corrected and done. I've told you my story. As a man of God, demons used to oppress me. Most people will not tell you the truth. They didn't care that I was anointed. It didn't stop the sick from being healed though. Yet I will go to bed and here comes this wicked spirit. And because of the prophetic inclination, I would see them. I thought it was so with everyone. How can I go and preach and a spirit is running out in a meeting and yet coming to me in a room and I'm driving it and it's not going. Have respect for the covenant. I know one, a very proud gentleman years ago, he walked into my room. I used to counsel in a small room that time and he walked to me and I saw a spirit standing behind him and he was sharing with me some of his challenges and I said can I pray for you it looks like there's something he said, no 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 I don't believe that I said okay no problem I'm sorry let me just pray as I said in Jesus name the last thing that gentleman will remember was maybe like 30 or so minutes later on when he even recovered for the next three days he kept texting me what happened he said this is everything I believe I don't know where to start from Let me tell you the truth, foundations are real. Foundations are very, very real. Hallelujah. Foundations are real. You find patterns, you find all kinds of demonic things that seem to veto the efforts of men. Regardless what they do, there are sincere men of God who have graces that should be speaking across the globe. But these foundations, because of an incorrect foundation that has not been dealt with, with understanding. The devil does not need to cause medical problem, a problem of delays and pain and all of that. He doesn't need to do that. All he needs to do is to ensure that that faulty foundation remains. The, the faulty foundation will manufacture itself many kinds of wrong problems. Do you cut a tree by removing the leaves one by one? Think how burdensome that labor is. Foundation. By the time you uproot it, even if the leaves are still green, just leave them as a matter of time. They will dry up because it has lost contact. The same way that tree fell, this is how I declare over someone, whatever has connected you, in the name of Jesus, it gives way this night. Listen carefully. This is someone's deliverance already. I've shared with you, you see, by reason of, of the prophetic, I have, I have encountered many spirits. I don't share all these testimonies because I want people, people's faith to be grounded on scripture, not just on prophetic experiences. Are we together? Yes. But I, I, I usually repeat the ones I've shared for emphasis. That I was praying one night and all of a sudden my ceiling just disappears and I see this strange creature having an eye as big as a human head. Two eyes. Fierce anger. Help them please. With the tail that looks like a dinosaur. 
the tail had its own life separate from the creature and it was looking at me like I'm looking at you fuming and he says so you think you can bring God's people into abundance that is a spirit that controls poverty across territories let me speak to someone whatever has kept your family down honestly in the name of Jesus Christ the one who is the lifter of men I decree and declare every spirit lets you go now let you go now he must let you go now hallelujah sit down please many years ago I came into this city and usually when I come when I'm traveling I would just take a cab moving across the city I'll take a cab and I remember one of the drivers that you know I took the cab he was talking to me and he said I listened to him he was speaking in broken English and he said there is a spirit in this city that never allows money to stay in the hands of people this was a driver speaking and he said he would get money and yet not be able to do anything so I think maybe they consulted you know all these people they believe in everything so they consulted a medium or some kind of thing that now told him that the moment he has money he should run out of the city and go and start something and he said he was almost completing his house now you don't have to be under that kind of threat there's authority in Christ but it comes through light it does not come through desire the challenge with believers is that we make bold claims of the manifestation of the promises without the requisite level of light and illumination God forbid I can't be in this situation what is the light that supports that statement otherwise you will be wasting your time are we together John 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there are families that it is not sickness that plagues them but this spirit of poverty even if you make so, that someone in that family a director in NMPC they will still be poor are we together there are many people who will bring certificates for you three doctors PhD in a family and none of them has a good job what kind of thing is that there are people who have been in this city the land itself has rejected them everything fights you everything fights you mm -mm. is someone learning maybe there's someone watching there's someone following and you're saying apostle you are just describing my situation as a family we we don't know what the problem is don't know what the problem is you're taking and after two three months here comes this strange and wicked spirit and somebody comes to molest you and by the next day or a few days after you lose the pregnancy that one will need more than medical attention that one will need a miracle service like this in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I know someone who vowed to help a man and I'm telling you I, I kid you not by the next day the person went to the office and the person said I cannot remember seeing you Abba, you can't remember seeing me when you said I should come with my CV tomorrow for instance and give me a job what happened mm. hallelujah what of people who actually get things but they don't have longevity in their life I don't mean physical longevity nothing stays long the moment they have money just start praying for them because it's a matter in one month it goes down once you give them a position just know that in in two or three weeks in that office something must happen then they must lose it it's like if you don't lose good things the realm of the spirit is at a, a state of unrest if there is anything that is on anybody's head here that followed you for this meeting I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I lift it up from you now I lift it up from you now I lift it up from you now hallelujah 
I know someone who traveled abroad responsibly. Just when they were checking people at the immigration, I think I've shared the story. They were looking for somebody who was a thief. And they saw him and I think there was a up to 50% resemblance with the thief. And they moved him to one room. Just like that, I don't look like a rich man. I don't look like somebody who is impacting the world. My face now looks like a thief. Ah no. Every wrong, every fail in the name of Jesus that is programming evil over you, that makes evil to look like good and good to look like evil. I declare that fail is torn from your face. Torn from your face. Torn from your face. Torn from your face. Hallelujah. Please hear me. True story. Someone was begging for money from somebody to take care of an emergency in the hospital. This is a true story. And when the person was doing the transfer, something came on the person and he missed the account by one digit and he sent the money to someone else. This is a true story. See, the, thing I've, the things I've seen in this life bar by reason of ministry. How do you plan to bless someone? Then it's when it's now your turn, they miss it by a digit. What was that other person praying that his own account was the one that came? Listen, do you know that God is called, you read your Bible, the sons of Jacob. I hope you know, Jacob had 12 sons. Is that true? The first of them was Reuben. Read your Bible, you are Bible students. Jesus is never called the lion of the tribe of Reuben. What happened to the firstborn? Not even Simeon. How did Judah come out to become the lion of the tribe of Judah? When Jacob was blessing his sons, you read your Bible now, he looked at Reuben and he said, you are my strength. You are the, the excellency of my strength, but you are as unstable as the wind. He said, thou shall not excel. And even Jesus, when he came, he refused to identify with that man. He would have polluted his own ministry. Not lion of the tribe of Reuben. Not lion of the tribe of Simeon. Lion of the tribe of Judah. So don't say we are the most enlightened family in our area. The realm of the spirit rearranges based on the covenants you are standing on. Did you hear what I said? It is, you can claim whatever you want to claim. The realm of the spirit with digital precision will rearrange everything based on the, the code that it was programmed with. That means it is possible to be a man physically, but the realm of the spirit brings you to a position of a woman and you will find out that you cannot feed your wife. Because the realm of the spirit does not yet authorize and recognize you as the Abba, the bread provider. You can be a graduate in a family and the one who takes care of them is the one that did not even go to primary school. Because in the realm of the spirit, that person is standing on a covenant that the realm of the spirit recognizes that one as a breadwinner. I'm saying that because we're about to pray. This miracle service, don't worry, we'll finish on time. Don't say I'm still teaching. This is the deliverance you are receiving. No, tonight you have to be angry. Enough is enough. Enough is enough in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? Do you know how many gifted people are in this nation and in Africa? world ministers music ministers these are people that are supposed to be at a global level but this foundation has kept them you talk with them you are like what are you still doing here there are people who will listen to you and say you are the exact person our company is looking for and after three years they will pass you every day and never call you for a job they would bring an ignorant person 
and train the person, send the person to France, return the person back and give the person a job. Whereas you already have the qualification. How about ministers of the gospel? Just because you are sincere, let me tell you the truth. Liking you is a grace. Make no mistakes about that. The liking you and receiving of your ministry, generationally speaking, is a grace. You can be sincere and do all you want to do. It will still not work. Is someone learning now? wicked spirits programmed in foundations it's like they tie you with a rope just when you are moving you are about to obtain this the way it pull your father it pulls you back you are on your way going whether you are a preacher it pulls you back just when you are reaching your destiny helper it pulls you back in the name of jesus whatever has tied you i cut it away from you right now I cut it away from you right now. I'm saying it again. I cut it away from you. See, listen. Can I tell you? Believe me when I tell you. You can know that you have had victory over your foundation. The result will speak instantly. A job that was difficult suddenly comes. Listen. Job chapter 42. Give us verse 10 and 11. Let me show you something. You can know when a demonic resistance holding you has left. The realm of the spirit and the physical realm will bear witness. Because the earth, listen to me, the earth, even water, is a witness. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. So the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. But 11 is where I'm really going to. What suddenly happened to him? You can know captivity has turned around. Watch this. Then there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. Question, what drove them? You think they just left? You think they did? Every one of them started feeling like, hey, what is, why is Job's issue coming to my heart? That's because something was corrected in the realm of the spirit. Watch this. The Bible says they did eat bread with him in his house. They bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the Lord had brought unto him. And then, this is how God restored him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. So they had it before while he was suffering. The same way your uncle has it and is aware that you are in this city. You have sent a text, sent a text. Stop sending a text. Come for miracle service. Carry an anointing upon your head. I hope you believe what I'm teaching you. Everyone gave him a piece of money. What kind of business was he going to start in that state of pain? How long would it take him? So, the Lord restored in the realm of the spirit, but physically things started happening. Can I tell you the truth? You can know, doctors, when a patient has malaria, how do you know the patient has malaria or typhoid? There are signs. Is that true? He goes to the hospital and there's what they call vital signs. Am I right, medical people? You now begin to check. Uh -uh. Temperature is running. The person is... Um, maybe vomiting, stooling, or doing whatever. How do you know the patient is recovering? You know the patient is recovering because things begin to change. Are there times when you take drugs and find out that the drug did not affect the intended change? You still go back to the doctor and say, this drug did not work. They will now do a further test and say, ah, we thought it was this. So just because it was a drug did not mean it solved every problem. As far as your body is concerned, you didn't take a drug. Even though you were on one week medication, your body did not recognize it because it was not the solution. Don't say, I have been praying. Don't say they prayed for me. When you take malaria drug for, for what now? Typhoid, it may not work. 
but it is still drug. Tonight, the right drug is coming on your head. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I'm declaring over you, you may not know what is changing. For some of you, as I'm declaring, it's not only your health. By tomorrow, if phone calls, you will wake up with phone calls and say, what is happening to me? What is changing in my life? Listen, please hear me believers, let me tell you the truth. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I've been mandated to insist that your life produces results. Yeah. Hallelujah. Undeniable, unquestionable results. Some of you, by reason of what is on your life, you are supposed to be building houses for people, not even looking for rent. Honestly, because in terms of value, you have worked on yourself. Let me pray for someone again. What is sitting on your destiny that will not let you and your family rise by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Here at Koinonia, all oh, be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. That demonic embargo. The cause of the firstborn, the cause of the lastborn, the cause of siblings, the cause of idolatry, the cause of necromancy, the cause of fathers sacrificing children to be able to get money. It may not be my fault, but the Bible tells me I have an advocate with the Father, even Jesus the righteous. I decree and declare already for someone that embargo on your life that programming it must give way this night yeah. hallelujah hallelujah you believe in what i'm telling you what is there about the mighty hand of god that you cannot see but let me tell you if the foundations be destroyed when the foundation is destroyed God wants to step in but there is a limitation because the covenant does not allow him to operate based on that what the Holy Spirit can do is to grant you access to light to know what you need to do that takes away the barrier are we together now yes between you and God and your breakthrough and testimony, there are barriers, principally foundations. There are foundations that keep speaking woes of ill health. There are foundations that speak woes of failure. The only way you eat is by being a servant. You never can rise to a position of influence. Whether as a man of God, as a businessman, it does not care whether you are in America, whether you are wherever, it does not matter. Do you know, Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Didn't you see what happened to Samson? Was Samson not a Nazarene? You think Samson just lay down and told a lady to cut his hair? You think he was that stupid? When you have that kind of power, will you be that foolish? Don't downplay the power of foundations. It can keep quiet for 10 years. You will think you are fine. But by the 11th year, it will come and pull you down and cancel everything. The house that fell, that was built on sand, it didn't fall from day one. There was a time that both houses were nice. If they even told you to pay for the house, you may prefer the house on sand to the house on the rock. Wait until the storms come. Wait until the wind blows. That's why you can see someone who is a billionaire for 25 years. Then by the 26th year, the foundation says I've been quiet. And in one year, everything goes down. 
one year shame comes a ministry can blossom for many years and then it's like an ignition from the realm of the spirit and poof, just like balloon everything goes down but i know whom i believe and i'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day against that day against that day now there are some of you you may not be poor listen we're about to pray you may not be poor but you never have helpers in your life everything you get comes directly from you that's a terrible way to live everything if a door must open you are the one who must open it if you must eat it must come from your hand you do not know the help of god hallelujah a man of god you are in ministry you pay all the bills by yourself you pay nobody sees you and say no i believe in what you are doing i'm standing with you it's a spirit it's a spirit it's a spirit i know someone who was walking and what he uses for his transport from where he was staying sincerely speaking at the end of it, when we calculated it, it was not more than 10,000 that was left. That means you are working, oh, but what you are earning, subtract transportation and the rest. And at the end of it, what you are really earning is 10,000. There are spirits that fight and destroy breadwinners of families. The moment it identifies that you are the one God is using to bless a family, here comes that thing. It will pull you down. So you go to a region and only find old people. Where are the young people? The spirits know that the, he will take care of Baba and Mama and it will fight you. You can see a young person sitting down and there is absolutely nothing working in his life. Two prayer points and I'll begin to minister within the time I have left. Tonight, God wants to shake away this thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. I was told a story of, I think it was the Billy Graham Institute, that because they wanted to preserve, they wanted to preserve the institute and some of the monuments, you know, just like Baba, Baba Deboye's, you know, former house and all of that, and that they had to bring engineers. They dug through the ground and they carried the building out from the foundation and relocated it to a, a, another region and put it down there that's right that's what is happening to somebody this night yeah. hear me you don't renovate foundations uh -uh. if it is not working there is that spiritual bulldozer that can dig to the ground and carry you is it not in your bible that God can pick a man from a dunghill is a location and place him somewhere else. So what if I came from my region? Must I carry the cost that comes with that region? So what if my forefathers served idols? Did the realm of the spirit not hear when I made my declarations of faith? Say, boy is real. You can sit and argue it in pride. Say, it doesn't matter and sit down there. But you can believe and say, but Lord, this is possible. Your life changes. Automatically. Do you believe this thing I'm sharing with you? I've taught you two things today. The price to develop intimacy. And the price of genuine connection. Genuine connection genuine connection you come for koinonia here you see manifestations of the spirit there are people like that they have reproduced it everywhere frankly speaking they can tell you i'm in a meeting say i didn't even pray honestly i just said father we give you thanks and people started for even then they will go back and say i but god thank you for covering for me it's alignment it's alignment when he dedicated the Jerusalem temple, he turned and said, Lord, whoever faces here, he didn't say if he prays well. Once he turns this direction, 
and he aligns with this direction please hear them so when daniel was in trouble he couldn't depend on his personal work he opened the gates towards jerusalem and said this is a matter of life and death i can't afford to take risk and play with myself hallelujah it is the lord's doing then it is marvelous marvelous go to Ida and you you go to you go to destiny makers international pastor alpha's ministry it's like koinonia reproduced verbatim now the shocking part how you know this is grace reproduced is that not all of them have come here let me tell you something about spirit transfer you don't have to learn it the anointing will make you do it are we together now the anointing will make you think in a certain way it will make you understand scripture in a certain way to produce certain outcomes it's a year of triumph because there is a possibility for a transfer there are some things you should never cry about in this ministry one of it is the presence of god one of it is the favor of god one of it is the gift of men one of it is the mantle for honor one of it is revelation and understanding one of it is prayer one of it is influence do you not see the graces flying around looking for those with discernment to receive the stranger comes visits koinonia once and carries that thing and goes back and their lives change there are people listening to me right now from Mubi. it was i think it was yesterday i got the text when i went there just a few weeks ago i prophesied to them because their roads are bad and i told them i said in the name of jesus i attract the attention of the government here to fix this road just yesterday the governor was there and they commit you, you okay you were there when we got the text the governor came there commissioned the road see let me tell you this thing don't wait till your life gets too bad i know the dimension of the prophetic god gave me it's called the creative dimension of prophecy creation you make things happen you program them in the realm of the spirit you hear people come to testify here it's not just about speaking brothers and sisters don't delay your life by yourself our time is gone but we'll go pray for five minutes rise up everybody can we rise up and pray please rise up and rise up we're going to pray prayer point number one father help me to be serious with you genuinely lift your voice and pray please pray point number two i like you to pray genuinely and say lord in any way i have not aligned genuinely i align by faith i align by faith lift your voice and pray it's how greatness happens in the kingdom brothers and sisters through authority through alignment believe in the lord your god so shall you be established believe in his prophet so shall you prosper Hallelujah. 
hallelujah i know that our time is gone please give me two minutes anything that is in your life that you did not see in this ministry pray it out now and say you must go even if you are a visitor lift your voice and pray you must leave you must leave in the name of jesus christ you must leave by anointing of the holy spirit you must leave Are you praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You now see the reason why when we welcome first timers, we call them out. We don't call them out just to clap for them. I know that many churches, they just identify them. Uh -uh. We call them out. That little prayer you see in the name of Jesus that I say everybody pray. I can just pray alone. It's not a ritual. When I say everybody pray, you are a benefactor of an anointing that should come to them. Are we together now? When we pray, sometimes I say hold hands and let's pray. That's the reason why I listen to every message. I've told you. I don't sit down and do any big manism because the things you hear me preach most times yes i prepared it and all of that but let me tell you the anointing that delivers those things are, is bigger than me i have to go back and listen by myself and receive the prophecy for myself otherwise i can be blessing others and never enter certain dimensions praise the lord please lift your hands our time is gone i want to pray for you lift your hands In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I pray for everyone here, honestly speaking, from the depth of my heart. I pray for you from today. I release you into a strange realm of favor. A strange realm of favor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, receive it right now. Favor on everything you do. I decree and declare the kind of open doors you have never seen. I prophesy to your life right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I command, listen, mysteriously. Some you will not even be able to explain how it happened. I command the doors to open now. I command the doors to open now. I decree and declare the gift of men if men have never risen to help you i place that anointing on your life begin to enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of men i pray for you the kind of hunger god can put in a man if you have never carried it carry it now hunger is a fire carry it now in the name of jesus Carry it now in the name of Jesus. Carry it now in the name of Jesus. Hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. I pray for you. Whatever makes people trivialize your grace, there is a grace for honor and influence. It's not by forcing people to honor you. Shabakatos kapariatakata. In the name of Jesus. Everyone genuinely connected to this grace. Carry that grace for honor. Carry that grace for honor. Carry that grace for influence. Go where your age cannot take you. Go where your education cannot take you. Go where your family background cannot take you. I break every obstacle and I push you forward. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. I hold this money in my hand as a point of contact. I stretch it towards you. 
in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I release you into a dimension of strange wealth. I release you now. Receive it. Step into it. I'm not talking of business. Suffering wealth by the finger of God. I release you into it. In the name of Jesus, I command people you did not do anything for, you didn't offer any value for them, they will call you and bless you by the strange hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. I pray for you. Many of you have never, you have not seen it. But I pray, people will no longer just be giving you money. I command that they start giving you items, property, vehicles. I command it, believe it, that something you would have saved for one year, in one day, I release that anointing upon you. Jobs you didn't apply for. Shakatokas katabarata. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I create space for you in the realm of the spirit. Everything you have tried and tried to do. Everybody tries it. It has made you mark time for years. By prophecy, move forward now. By prophecy, move forward now. Move forward now. Move forward now. Hear me. Any business here that is barren of customers, nobody comes. You are good. You, your products, your services, right now from tomorrow morning, in a strange way, I command patronage for your business. If there is anyone here, you are anointed by God, and God has trained you, but no open doors for ministration, no opportunity to bless people, no opportunity for your grace to be recognized. I declare, let that veil be open now. I command men to discern your grace and to take advantage of it. There is a grace in this ministry that leaves shame. I pray for you. Anything that represents shame in your life, quarter to disgrace. May the God that I serve arise and bail you out. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, your family members, right now they are at a point of intense shame. If God does not help them, the embarrassment will be too much. I decree and declare, may the God of heaven arise and do a miracle for them. In the name of Jesus. Worship him, our time is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Please don't mix next week. I will be showing you certain things. All that deep things. But please, all through this week, as you pray, I'd like you to pray with understanding. Lord, I believe in you. I believe in your servant. I believe in you. I receive what you have released that came through the word. That is the word of triumph. I receive it. Write down the things you want to see happen. Continue your praise over it. You may not do it every day, but when you have opportunity, don't just dance anyhow. Write the request. Lord, these things must happen before December. And I thank you. I worship you for it. And you watch. We are, we are doing a strange... Just cooperate with God and watch what happens. In the Shout it again. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every stronghold attempting to stop prophecy from manifesting in my life I challenge you right now lift your voice and pray Let's go. 
Again, in the name of Jesus, every legal access upon which Satan wants to oppress me, I plead the blood and I declare my liberty now. Lift your voice and in the name of Jesus the spirit of ancestry and the covenants of the father affecting my lineage and wanting to affect my life I decree and declare I've been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation release me now release my destiny lift your voice and say Release me in the name of Jesus, the ordinances of darkness, the spirit of ancestry. of a hard life I decree and declare that the Lord judges you over my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray the spirit of a hard life the spirit of Hey! 
cette personne, cette alléluia. C'est enfin in the name of Jesus. Every force of darkness feeding on my glory, stopping it from manifesting. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and prophesy. I command my life to shine. I command my life to shine. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. I decree and declare, it's my season of triumph. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. Every force. Stopping my helpers from reaching me through bad reports, through divination, through misguided reports. I command in the name of Jesus that the Lord is against you. Release my helpers to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Whether you understand what you are praying or not, pray. Open your mouth and pray. Thou shalt arise and have met your born child for the time to save her. Yet the set time, the set time, set time, the set time. Hallelujah. I like what you represent to visualize what God is doing in your life. Everything that should be in my life now and was hijacked by the enemy, I place a demand in the name of Jesus. Locate my destiny now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, lift your voice and pray. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every force of darkness. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. Do a new thing or what has not been done before. Let me add this one more prayer. He says, Son of man, can this bone And the prophet said, Honestly, I've been a prophet. So prophesying is not something that is new, but this for this case, I don't know. And then he said, Professor, he didn't say discuss, he didn't say cry. In one minute, I'm not going to tell you what to say, but I want you to stand and look at your destiny. I want you to prophesy, carry the word of God like a drum, put it on your destiny. My destiny, I speak to you. You are alive, hear the word of the Lord. I command you to rise. I command you to go. I program favor for you. Pray. I program.
under the sound of my voice under any kind of seed that will not let you see the faithfulness of God I decree and I declare right now that power leaves your life right now that force leaves your life right now Bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives there must be similarity you must believe similar things about God about life about money about family it qualifies you to be friends Second scripture, very, very touching scripture. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. It tells us that he who desires friends, you must sow that seed. Proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest. Meaning that until you sow that seed, there is no harvest of relationship. It says a man that hath friends must first show himself what? Friendly. And trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother. Most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds. You don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant. Relationships are harvests. We must sow the seeds. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Read with me. One, two, read. He that walketh with the wise shall do what? But a friend of foolish friends. What will he get? It didn't say foolish people don't have a future. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible says you are a product of your environment. He that walks with the wise shall himself be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Please write this down everyone. Relationships do not maintain themselves. Relationships do not maintain themselves. It takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from 
relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves apostle people don't like me show me the seeds you are sowing the seeds of friendship are we together now apostle nobody wants to walk this koinonia people serve they say greet one another they don't even greet me no sir how to maintain relationships this is the crux of the teaching how to maintain relationships i want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we are going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving we are going to read so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you believers are very very competitive people jealous people you bought this car i buy it too you bought this suit i buy it too if, if you know i'm not just saying it for koinonia alone but this is something i've observed this is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide especially in the african continent we are obsessed with the passion to prove points and so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition men of god compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague of competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this proverbs 27 verse 4 many of us fall sick being envious of people listen very very powerful description look up please it says wrath is cruel that means it's not good don't do it anger is outrageous but compared you know in comparison who is able to stand before envy in other words envy is worse than anger wrath is cruel anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envious people never get results in their lives they live their lives in bitterness and pain could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships last scripture proverbs 14 verse 30 okay we already have that we read it already proverbs 27 verse 4 we'll just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient until the word of god manifests in my life i reject jealousy i cast away jealousy from my life lift your voice and pray in one minute it will sting your ego but brothers and sisters this is god speaking pray the spirit of competitive jealousy I take it away from my life please pray envious of my workers at work envious of my business contemporaries no 
then the sin is not just bad it is sin sin against yourself you depress yourself there are many people that don't sleep in the night this lady was my junior in school she's now married and i'm not married you are envious this person i was the person that that trained this person he's now a millionaire i'm no longer i'm a pastor this is my son it's all those jealousy and envy kill it now lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus i come against it satan you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip backbiting and evil speaking the bible calls it ill speaking statistically you can go and check it the top reasons why relationships break give us titus chapter 3 verse 2 please and then proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19 avoid gossip backbiting speaking evil unfortunately and with all due respect to the body of christ for some reason the church in nigeria i don't know if it's because of our african background we are experts at gossip experts at backbiting experts at speaking evil to speak evil of no man are we there to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to speak evil of no man it is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people there are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong are we together you speak evil of people we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is god speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit i'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up i'll read it these six things does the lord hate so god hates it these six things does the lord hate seven are an abomination unto him we're reading to 19 number one a proud look number two a lying tongue number three hands that shed innocent blood number four a heart that devised wicked imagination there is such a heart feet that be swift in running into mischief 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and the last of them is what he that soweth discord it didn't say among men among who you find them in every church and every ministry experts are joining the heads of nice people together hey jimmy i i wouldn't have told you but I've, I've, do you know have you noticed that every time koinonia comes there's a way pastor alpha looks at you <laughs> i will just you about it later it's devilish it's devilish it's devilish 
you are sowing seeds of discord there are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them there are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced adam and eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice you must be careful third voice is ruin quality relationships how many of you god wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and said sorry you how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord sorry i i overheard somewhere that you like this lady are you are you blind i just came to advise you are you blind this lady that has lived like this she was my neighbor growing up so it's, it's something i know is that how you hate your destiny and the brother goes back be careful because when we pray during miracle services we pray very wild prayers and tell god to put those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress and you must be careful that that's not you because the prayer will be answered anyway are we together he that soweth discord do you know that gossip can be habitual meaning even if there is nothing to say because you have trained your mind you will always you just see somebody pass and say ah let me tell you something i didn't plan to talk but no don't laugh almost everybody is guilty of this so when it's time to pray who will cry before God first for yourself and say, Lord, I'm guilty. I am very, very guilty. Are we together? Yes. Worship team standing to worship. Are you see how this guy is standing? That, that's the guy I'm telling you. Hey, you don't know. That guy, I saw him around that area yesterday. He likes the lady. He likes What is your business? For heaven's sake, what is your business? Are we together? Yeah. What is your business? Backbiting, ill spoken words. You just hear that somebody is rising, you say, Who? Who is rising? No, I need to do something about it. Don't become like that. Ill spoken words. The appetite. You see, every time you talk bad about people, I want you to remember that you are destroying God's creation. You must stop it. If put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying when you tear down people and destroy them how many people tear down men of god you don't think about their churches what happens to their members while you are destroying them what happens when you are talking ill of a pastor what happens when you are tearing him down what happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife think of what happens to her reputation it affects her leadership you are experts at doing it it's a habit that I trust that God will break from us because many of us this is what drives friends from us come pastor Alpha God brings your destiny helper he holds your hand in two weeks in two weeks everybody knows everything about you ah I came to apostles house I saw him counting dollars don't mind that quietness so oh, apostle is rich you think it's an information you are giving and God is saying you see this person you are not a candidate for my help carry your trouble and go away I say, ah, but God is going to help me no we have destroyed our lives destroyed opportunities how many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves they have it's an obsession if there is nothing to talk about you can even be the person to act the drama yourself I beat my wife. I just want you to know honestly. And you see, listen, the thing about gossip and ill speaking, please listen, this is a lesson for all of us to learn. The thing about gossip is, it is like lost. Whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to. Including a child. Imagine me now coming to talk assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite boy this is your father now you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly 
gossip. Terrible. Backbiting. Terrible. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned. Do what to them? What is the scriptural remedy? Listen, hold on. Let me teach you something. Be careful when you partner with gossip. Because very soon, the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about. And you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor. A typical example is workers. People who work in their profession. Your boss, your superior, they come and meet you and say, this is our boss, eh? so, 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 and so. And they gossip. When promotion comes, what do you think happens? They say, eh, Boss, I, I just came to appreciate you and to confess something. Sir, let me be honest. I've been talking about you. You see, he has bailed himself, Abby. But, sir, this is even the milder part of the story. The worst one is, I'm about to tell you someone else who joined me. Because he's looking for promotion. And all of a sudden, a boss that says, see me by 3 o'clock. you come back and say, pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company. Why, sir? Please leave my office. Seed of discord. Gossip is cancerous. Backbiting. 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 You must avoid it like a cancer. Number three. The third way to maintain relationships. Avoid offense. Avoid offense. What is offense? The ease with which you get irritated, angry, and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and ah, it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 Talking about love now It says love does not behave itself unseemingly Seeketh not her own Is not easily provoked or anger If you are truly walking in love I don't care what your background is You will not be easily angered There are people who get angry very easily Very easily Bros, how now? He say me. I'm 10 years older than you. I am. Please don't think that because me, on a very good day, wouldn't you be saying what he Easily offended. You see, offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself. When you judge things from a faulty perception, things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation. Offense. Refuse to be offended. Refuse to be offended. There will be occasion for offense in every relationship. From a marriage relationship, a business relationship, ministerial relationship. You must make up your mind as a choice. That the blessings that I seek to receive from the relationships God is bringing in my life is greater than any offense. Offense destroys. Because you see, when you are offended... One of the many ways you act is speech. And every time you speak with a heart of offense, usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation. You will talk in the flesh. You can make it mean that you cannot withdraw again. Many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous, they would have regained it. Many people have lost business opportunities because of that. Offense is an advice. It's an encouragement. The Bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended. Let me tell you, you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense. Especially if you are a leader. People do things that should get me offended every day. I do things that should get people offended every day. An example is what I'm teaching now. Are we together now? There are things that get people offended. You must make up your mind. 
that I will not be offended. How many men of God get offended and they can preach? They get offended at home. They come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children. The kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family. So you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit. Offense makes you small. Offense makes you cheap. Offense reduces your worth. Let me tell you something about offense. Most of those who offend you, they know they offended you. The goal is that their joy is in your reaction. Most of those who offend, offend intentionally. But when you grow above it, you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living. After this service now, on your way home, an angry driver, an angry man, something will happen that will offend you. But you must make up your mind and say, Satan, you are a liar. I already see your hand. I will not be offended. Say in the name of Jesus, I reject offense. Is God speaking to us? Number four, how do we maintain relationships? Practice forgiveness. Practice forgiveness. Mark chapter 11 verse 25. Then Ephesians 4.32. Please give it to us. Mark 11.25. Practice forgiveness. I don't know one relationship, including the one of you and God, that can thrive without forgiveness. It's not God you are forgiving. God is forgiving you all the time. Because there are people who really are angry with God. Okay, I forgive you God. Let's get back into the relationship. And when ye stand praying, most prayer warriors miss this. Let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives. It's not all about demons. And when ye stand praying, what is the rule? Forgive, comma, if ye have ought against any, that your Father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. It's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts. Some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything protocol department <laughs> their own star 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 they offended me ushers i was falling before everybody and they were watching me i injured myself and you write it down then you leave everything and say, Father, don't you know that I'm human? And God says, really? It's like a small child that begs you for something. Then you give him and say, give back. And he refuses. That's exactly what we do. You can never live in this life without forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is giving. Forgiveness is giving. It is giving pardon and mercy. Forgiveness. A disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving. If you are not a forgiver, you are not a giver. Not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed. It's not just refusing seeds. Forgiveness. But let me balance very quickly. You don't forgive just to make peace. Forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness. But the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward. Because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it. Let me be very honest and let me balance. Forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance. A willingness to turn away. Forgiveness is useless. To the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance it is useful to you let me show you what offense does um can i use someone sam please come watch this this is what offense does i want to move forward but i think sam is standing my way and so i'm trying to push him will i move forward holding him i'm trying to hold sam i can't move forward myself this is what forgiveness is he can be there not even 
deserving it but i release him so that i can move forward i can leave him and his trouble there if he accepts that he is wrong and turns then we make peace and we can work together if he refuses i still forgive so that i can move forward let me tell you the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended the person who was offended is the one who is most wounded it is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset so your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive as a leader people will offend you every day people will do wrong things every day you must forgive hallelujah everybody say i receive grace to forgive say i let go everyone i'm holding in my hands holding people hold them in your heart i will never forgive my mother except i have yeah, said my own and you can never receive blessing i will never forgive my father for what my father has done if i have a knife i will kill him by myself and say daddy die i'm the one killing you i will never forgive that person who raped me when i was four years old i will never forgive that uh, what they call it now that brother he went out with me and broke and scattered my heart please forgive so that you can move forward forgive so that you can move forward turn it into prayer in one minute lord i'm tired of holding people I release right now I let go that boss in the name of Jesus I release my husband I release my wife I release my co-worker I release my business partner I release the man of God I release my head of department I release my escorts I release the members in my department I release Joshua Selman make sure you pray I release everyone who has offended me because I want to move forward I want to move forward practice forgiveness hallelujah it says and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake forgave us very quickly Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 okay Ephesians 4 verse 32 is there and then give us Luke chapter 6 verse 37 Luke 6 37 let's hurry up Luke 6 37 Luke chapter 6 verse 37 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged in other words every time you judge people you are scheduling seasons for yourself condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven make sure you practice this make sure you practice this number five very quickly how do I mean quality relationships be tolerant be tolerant forgiveness is different from tolerance forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change you have to incorporate it as part of that person's living there are people i wish i would tell you everybody around you will change there are people who will not change so you switch from forgiveness to tolerance you accommodate that limitation in their life factor it and build a system around it is god speaking to us yes i have many friends all kinds of friends and just like me they are very funny people everybody has all kinds of attributes the same way i am to them too but it takes tolerance there are some things in me unfortunately may not change tolerance you don't you today i like everybody around me to talk but say, i don't talk you don't need forgiveness what do you need tolerance. or you you talk too much i just ask you a question where is where is uh, my trouser he said uh, the other one i didn't ask you about what happened where is my trouser please tolerance your destiny helper may be a talkative if you are tolerant to the talkativeness then you receive the breakthrough everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you if everybody was like me the world would be a terrible place you would think the world would be a nice place no you don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life this world would be a sad place 
you will only be studying and reading and sleeping what a world i am so happy for people who are not me they add flavor i benefit from the joy of them not being me you must have a high degree of tolerance colossians chapter 3 please help us 12 and 13 colossians chapter 3 is called forbearance you must tolerate people put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave so also do ye forbearing one another you have business partners you will need forbearance are we together you are in your office working you need forbearance in a ministry like this you need forbearance everybody cannot be you brothers and sisters learn this oh god change them wonderful prayer but they have their wills if they don't change does that mean you will not move forward tolerance number six the sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved you maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship you must be a contributor there are parasitic relationships relationships are meant for mutual benefit maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution i cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life no Ejimi is my friend he contributes greatly in my life i contribute greatly in his life so there is a basis for continuity are we together now if you are not valuable to a relationship that relationship's lifespan is very small it will never please hear this this is true for marriage it is true for business it is true for ministry there are many people who complain and say joshua selman doesn't want to be my friend doesn't want to be this and i don't know i want to be your friend it's just that i am passionate about value be a contributor money is not the only thing to contribute love kindness godliness are we together now there are so many things to bring into a relationship not everybody's looking for money in a relationship there are people who have conquered that realm. they need love they need value they need understanding they need help you must learn this if you want a guy to come into your life what value are you going to bring as a guy what value are you going to bring even the church and christ truly speaking doesn't need anything from us but because of his love he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something that's why when we worship and praise him is we 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 we're not necessarily adding anything to him but he has limited himself that way so that it can give us room for expression relationships must be mutually beneficial if there are five people in a business and only two are running that business they are the two who will be the closest of friends the rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value please i want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much the reason why even in the house of god it's true that we love everybody unconditionally but we are not committed to everybody at the same level it is according to contribution say amen you must be a contributor if you are helping me spiritually you will be close to me if you are helping me financially you will be close to me if you are helping me in terms of the love for god if you are helping me fulfill my assignment you will be close to me if you are not doing any of this i love you but you can't expect to be close to me the same way if i'm not contributing meaningfully to your life you love me but i can't be close to you relationships are based on contributions i want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated 
but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad he said no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that you say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the Holy Spirit, you are rebellious, you are disobedient, you don't pray, no secret place. And you say, Lord, why are you not close to me? And he says, what is all this? Are you not hearing what the apostle is saying? You have to be the mutual contribution. Give me time, I give you more of myself. Become a contributor to the growth of the relationship. Number seven. So we wrap up for tonight. Practice genuine love. The last key to maintaining quality relationship. Practice genuine love. Underline the word genuine. There are many people whose relationships are purely based on what I will get. In as much as I have spoken about value. Brothers and sisters, if the only basis for relating people is what you will get, you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of god as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season Christ died for us Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins i see people in relationships not love really all kinds of relationships and the ease with which they get offended no sir If five people come into your life, not love relationship now necessarily, five people come into your life, none of them can stand two weeks. The problem is you, not them. Are we together? Hatred, stirred up strife, but love covereth. How many sins? That means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love. The secret to peace all kinds john 13 35 john 13 35 then give us first john 4 20 first john 4 20 john 13 35 john 13 verse 35 by this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a christian name if ye have love not for god love for one another loving god is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love god that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love god that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of loving one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself i cannot hate anybody in the house of god no impossible impossible truly speaking i'm not just saying it i live a very peaceful life <laughs> apostle why are you angry can you no i've been delivered i live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers 
the workers in this ministry know with all humility that i love them with all my heart i love the leaders they know it i'm lavish about it i love them with all my heart how could i ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart this is why some of us never get the anointing this is why many of us never command results our hearts are full of hatred there is always one bad story to say no first john 4 verse 20 and then we round up first john 4 verse 20 god has spoken to us tonight if a man say even if his name is joshua selman if joshua selman says i love god like many christians say and hated his brother he didn't say hated he didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did he just said if he hated his brother please read on if you're a christian what is he he didn't say he's an angry person and god understands that person is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen how can he love god that he had not seen church we must not only love jesus we must love ourselves more pastors who and we experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving god and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why i honor the lord for the ministers around i mean reverend dr tende is here god bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time i see them come visit like this i am very blessed love there are times i pick up my phone and i just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them, how are you? How is the work? The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. There are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. I say, Has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know, that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you. But when you had privilege... The number he had then that you had, you did not invest in it. And now he has changed his life. Only those who blessed him have the new line. You are not part of them. And you are angry and grumbling and say, all these pastors. I remember when God started helping me, a lot of people were offended and said, what is all this thing? Eh? I tried to call a pastor, he cannot call you. Call, you say protocol, he doesn't know me. And I said, you can imagine. Two years, you have never asked whether God, whether Koinonia people are eating where the, how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say look I have Bishop Oedipo's number C, Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call, he says, see all these organ men of God. I will not pick if I'm here. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please, don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. A little prayer. Man of God, how are you, sir? Just to find out. Mommy, how are you? daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it even if they don't have time to reply they are noting it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have say but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic greetings here my name is this these are my problems you just please it bless you and I say, what? Just like that? No. There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you. My mother has come again, no, honestly. Uh, my father has come again, no. My sister. Remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. must invest in relationships you must love brothers and sisters i stand by the integrity of god's word and i tell you this if you practice these things before last koinonia it would have changed your life there are some of you this is what you need this is
the revelation you need to enter the next level. It's not like the job cannot come. There are many people now that admission will start. You're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people. Sir, I remember it's me that sent you CV and says, is it because I'm coming for Koinonia and you are seeing me like that? You've never done anything. You've never said take five for life and all of that. No, 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 no. Sir, the, the, I, just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finishing now. You promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for, for projects. You didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call, write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you. Because when a man loves you, everything he has loves you too. If a millionaire loves you, his money loves you too. An anointed man loves you, his anointing will love you. There are anointings that reject people. Yes. That's why people don't receive. We are going to pray. And you are going to cry to the Lord. And say, Lord, the answer to my challenge will have to be one of these five. Either I have not paid the price knowing you. Or I have not genuinely submitted to authority. I have not committed myself to mental transformation. I have not paid the price to be skillful and valuable or I have not paid the price to build and maintain quality relationships. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank the Lord for the word you've heard tonight. Lift your voice and begin to bless Him. Extraordinary results. Results that defy limitation. These are the systems of the kingdom we engage in. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like us to pray. I've listed these areas. You know the areas where you honestly need to flog it out with God. In the next one minute, please swallow your pride and cry to God and say, I obtain mercy. I obtain mercy. Lord, I have not paid the price to know you. I am lazy spiritually and otherwise. I have not committed myself to pressing into the things of God. There's too much distraction in my life and I make up my mind that I will change from today. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I have not committed myself to transiting mentally. I am still carrying age-old ideas that are destroying me. Ideas that are responsible for my pain. Ideas that are responsible for the misery in my life. I am a product of my mindset. I have by a wrong mindset driven good people in my life. Driven good opportunities in my life. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. No more laziness. From tonight, I commit myself to personal development. Lord, I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. Lord, I receive grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Finally, pray for relationships. Lord, all the areas that you have touched tonight, I receive grace. I declare that I'm free. The Bible says, He who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I declare that I'm free from offense. I'm free from bitterness. I'm free from gossiping, backbiting, ill-spoken words against people. I only seek the good of another. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, I let go every offense. I make up my mind that I'm pressing to the place of destiny. And in the name of Jesus, no power of hell will stop me. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. Father, every dimension of result I should have entered that lack of observing these truths have kept me. I declare that your mercy reopens that door for me. Go ahead, lift your voice and pray.
I decree and I declare the mercy of God again. I decree and declare the mercy of God again. I decree and declare the mercy of God again. Are you praying? I decree and declare relationships that I've lost because I did not see understanding. I decree and declare by the mercy of God they are reopened. Business opportunities, financial opportunities, ministerial connections, strategic relationships, connections that would have lifted me, bailed me out of trouble, stop shame from my life. Hallelujah. I won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to one more time i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to survive it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me I need you to survive Lord I stand before your people and we declare connecting with all those who are following from the nations of the earth and Lord we declare that we are ready to put these truths to work in the name of Jesus we lay our pride tonight we humble ourselves before you the Lord of glory you have brought your word to lift us the bible says he sent forth his word we receive the sent word into our hearts we commit ourselves to applying the changes that are required and lord we declare that your grace and your mercy will back us up let there be results in our lives we decree and declare that between now and the end of this year let our lives command strange results in the name of jesus christ all of the limitations in our lives that grant satan and demon spirits access to live and destroy us we declare by the blood of jesus that they are closed and closed forever in the name of jesus christ amen and amen everyone please keep standing you're here tonight and um whilst you were hearing me speak the holy spirit was speaking to you and saying that you need to make your ways right or especially you are here and you have discovered that offense is eating you up it has killed your spiritual life you literally backslid just because of offense and bitterness and hatred and you're finding it difficult to let go you are here you want to give your life to jesus you want to make up your life you want to take away these things and say lord i need to start afresh if you're here inside outside any of the overflows please i want you to make your way very quickly we have one minute for you wherever you are make your way to the front thank you jesus someone is responding to this call god bless you someone is responding to this call quickly please if you're coming make way to jesus go ahead make your way lord i want to make it right with you tonight i can't live my life like this i came for koinonia i may deceive others but i cannot deceive myself lord i'm ready to lay everything down everything down go ahead god bless you God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're still coming outside. Please double up and come. Double up and come. Those online, connect with us wherever you are. And pray the prayer as I lead God's people to pray. Please come, direct them. Direct them. God bless you. I see people coming. Make your way to the front very quickly. Hallelujah. Please come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Thank you. Most of you uh, have given your life to Christ. You are rededicating your life. Some of you are giving your life to Jesus for the first time. Doesn't matter what category you are part of. Please mean this with all your heart. Mean this with all your heart. Jesus is here. And let this be a new beginning for you. Say in the name of Jesus. I lay aside every offense. I lay aside every bitterness. Every anger. Every unforgiveness. I declare tonight that Jesus is Lord of my life. I hand over my life and everything about me to Jesus. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from tonight I am a changed person. From tonight the love of God dwells in me. The spirit of God dwells in me. No more bitterness. No more hatred in the name of Jesus. The power of sin and Satan is broken over my life forever. 
in Jesus name Lord Jesus thank you for this one some of them are handing their lives totally to you and some of them are making up their minds to let go every offense and everything that has held them I decree and declare that you honor their decisions and I pray that from tonight your life will skyrocket to a new dimension of achievement in the name of Jesus you will love Jesus and hold on to him never to replace him by anything and anyone in Jesus name I pray amen and amen thank you so much for making precious saints thank you for staying soon with us on this platform reflector hope TV and with God's servant Apostle Joshua Selman the word of the Lord has come to your life and it must definitely be made manifested the realities of the spoken word of God must be seen must be bettered in your life don't give up on God hold on still for God has not given up on you he's still writing your story he's not done with you yet absolutely I'd like you to engage all you've heard the word of the Lord through his servants on this platform engage them by prayer and ensure that all of the spoken word of God in your life see to it that they come to pass none of God's word will fall to the ground and as you get blessed don't forget that there is someone close to you who also needs to get blessed there is someone close to you who also needs Jesus there is someone close to you who also needs an encounter share this video with that person share this video with that colleague of yours that friend of yours that neighbor of yours that you have been praying for this video might also be of help share this video to that person and in case you are a new viewer don't forget to hit the subscribe button and strike the notification bell so as to stay in touch with our recent uploads god bless you we love you so much